Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to see you today. Hope that you are well, hope that everything is going well with you. If, if it's your first time, welcome to this channel. I am Daphne and on Fridays we have these videos which are called Fidelity Fridays with also often in tea and we always have tea and we always have a chat, a girly chat and fellowship and so I'm very excited to see you today. Hopefully you can stay. Today I wanted to come on and have a chat with you ladies. I know that you enjoy these kind of videos and I want to share things that my mom has taught me, things that I have learned uh, over the years and things that I'm still learning and I am by no means perfect. I don't try to be perfect. I'm not perfect and you know we are all on a learning journey. We are all constantly growing and learning so it's good to share things with each other and you know if you have something to share please do share it in the comments and we can all learn from each other. So what are you having? What are you having to eat or to drink? I'm having a vanilla latte with coffee and pumpkin spice syrup <laughs> mixed together. Um, I feel like it's already autumn now so I think I can I think I can whip out a little bit of pump, pumpkin spice, um, so that's what I'm having and I'm also having my scone with clotted cream and um, jam. So that's what I am having, so let's get into it. Alright, so the first bit is going to be a bit detailed, but ladies, when we go to the loo, I don't know if you've been, I don't know if you've ever been in a public um, loo and then Maybe you're washing your hands and then you hear and you're washing your hands. Like, what do you think about that? How does that make you feel or what impression that, does that give you? This is something that my mom taught me way, way, way many, many years ago. Um, that it actually makes you seem as if you're kind of loose down there. And imagine you're in your house and you have relatives and maybe your loo is downstairs and the lounge is it's right next to the loo and they hear when you go into you go into the loo so it's not really great i think as women you have to go be mindful of that you don't have to um make noise when you are having a go you know i think there's ways to sit on the toilet seat there's ways to go about it but um just be like a lady when you use the toilet and this may seem like daphne this is like Daphne stop being extra, but I'm not being extra. I just think, as my mom taught me, I'm also sharing things that she has taught me. And you don't want to give the wrong impression. You don't want people to have certain imaginations about you simply because there isn't really modesty in the sounds <laughs> you make when you go to the loo. So I just thought to share that one. And speaking of the loo, um, I think it's important as women when we use the loo, whether it's in the public, whether it's in private, whether it's in your home, to leave it how you want to see it when you enter. To leave it how you want to see it. And something that I do personally is, especially when I'm in public, I always have like a little perfume, a small little perfume. And what I do, make sure that the seat is wiped, that I didn't leave any stains on the seat, make sure that it's, you know, clean, presentable, and also that it smells good. So I just spray. Um, into the air or just spray myself so when I come out the next person that's coming in um, they see that it smells fresh it smells good and I think it's just polite and it's just kind to do that so it's not even about oh I don't care what people think about me or why do I have to do things for because I don't really why do I have to do certain things because I don't care what people think about me it's not about that but it's just, it's just about being kind it's just about being polite in terms of how you carry yourself so yeah and then Continuing on <laughs> with that, um, you know when we take a bath, when we take a shower, ladies, make sure that you wash properly. Um, you know, I think sometimes growing up, nobody teaches us certain things. Maybe you didn't have a grandma, or maybe you didn't have a mother, or maybe you didn't have sisters. And this is why I share these kind of videos to help each other, to help you, and to be that big sister if you didn't have one, or the little sister that has something to say. <laughs> Um, so, so our bums, they tend to stink. Where God parted us, it tends to stink, so it needs to be washed. However, for after certain hours of washing, that area can still begin to smell. So, as women, this is a tip I can share with you. Um, use witch hazel. I don't know if you know anything about witch hazel. Um, witch hazel, it's like a liquid, it's like water, basically. It's basically like water, so... What you do, get a little dropper, like oil dropper, maybe five mils of an oil dropper. Carry with you maybe cotton pads, 
put on the cotton pad drop a little bit on your cotton pad until saturated then wipe wipe down there so let's say you've just done number two i know this is very graphic i really apologize <laughs> i know this is very graphic but if you've done number two just wipe down there and it's not gonna smell for hours and hours and of course you have to wash when you take a shower take a bath make sure you wash everything so hopefully those tips can help you um i know that um you know not everybody is very feminine not everybody um has the same style and i truly appreciate that but these are things that are not to do with really your style not to do with really being feminine but it's just a way to help you as a person to help you around other people to help you um in terms of living with other people especially if maybe you're married or maybe you live with your family i think these are just things that will help you um, in terms of that so moving on to things that are not so graphic the next thing that I have on my list is fork and knife, using a fork and knife. And, and I know not everybody likes to use a fork and a knife, but I think this is whereby when you go in public, you embarrass yourself because at home, you don't really do it at home. So people like our mothers, people like our grandparents, people like our sisters or aunties, these are things that they teach us at home so that when we go out into society and we go out into the world, we show that we have some home training skills. And I feel that sometimes when we're at home, we begin to slump on the sofa, but snacking and chewing anyhow, eating anyhow. And it's not to say you should be extra or anything, but I feel like if you're gonna have a meal, breakfast, it requires you to cut, it requires you to break the food down, in other words, I feel like you need to use a fork and a knife. So. Practice using a fork and a knife for general eating, for general meals, breakfast, lunch, even at work, dinner. For me, growing up, I used to like using a spoon a lot. And I noticed that even at home, I'll just use a spoon. I wasn't using a fork and a knife. And, you know, you can't be cutting food with a spoon. It's, it's not designed for that. So let's use the utensils that are designed for certain purposes. Your hands are not for breaking food they're for breaking bread you can break bread <laughs> but you know don't mean breaking eggs with your hands and breaking sausages and you know maybe a vegetarian breaking whatever that vegetarians um whatever big chunks of food that um, vegetarians eat and you know just use a fork and a knife learn and train how to do that and something i like to do personally is always have a tray so always have a tray on my lap when i'm having a meal on my own and it's just good to do that. Um, perhaps you don't really want to sit on the table. Perhaps you don't have a table. Just get a nice little tray. Put your food in there. Put a fork and a knife. And if you want to go deeper, start looking at dessert spoons. Start looking at soup uh, spoons and utensils that you use for that. Start looking into fish uh, utensils and things like that. So if you want to go deeper, go deeper. But I feel that generally and as a basic thing, we should use forks and knives. Ladies, the art of being a lady, use a fork and a knife, get a tray, a nice little tray that you like. And I think it's so fun to to do that, you know, save, save 20, 30 pounds and get a nice tray for yourself um, and, nice, and nice utensils. And I feel like with forks and knives, sometimes as women, we might think, well, I'm not gonna need that till I get married. And so you're living with this perspective that I won't do this because I'm not yet married. I'm not going to buy myself this or live like this or go to this place until I'm married. And it's, it's not really a great mindset to have because you're not enjoying your now. You're not seeing the beauty of your now. You cannot make memories of your now. You are not happy with your now. And it takes you to a place of unhappiness, a, t a place of um, even striving, a place of sometimes even depression because of thinking so much and you know I feel like we as women before you're even married you should know the kind of utensils that you like do you like silverware do you like gold forks and knives what do you like copper you should already have this kind of knowledge stainless steel what do you like the shape the styles I think this is something that we should already know something we should already be learning and you don't need a lot of money to buy that. Um, you can get really good stuff in Ikea, really good stuff on Amazon. 
And if you want to go high end, you can go high end, but they do the same things. Maybe, of course, <laughs> some things don't last too long, but you know, you sort of just enjoy your moments, enjoying having a meal. Perhaps sometimes the reason why you don't like to have certain meals is because is because maybe you're not finding beauty in having a meal, beauty in just sitting down with your tray, with your nice plate, fork and knife, with your napkin or your tissue, and just cutting your food, just enjoying yourself with a drink, a super malt. Um, some people like to have tea with your, with your food or with a glass of non-alcoholic wine or alcoholic wine or whatever. Um, you know, you just enjoy the moment, the beauty of having a meal. I think it's so important. So I just want to share that and hopefully this video won't be too long. But yeah. And the next thing, ladies, nails. And this is something I've, I've spoken about many times. And I feel especially if there are people around you watching, because like this title, The Art of Being a Lady, when nobody's watching, I feel like sometimes we let ourselves go because nobody's there to pretend. Nobody's there to maybe live up to an expectation. But have expectations for yourself. Have boundaries for yourself. Boundary and expectations that I cannot have my nails looking crazy for over a week. And especially like me, I, I like red nail polish. It's my favorite color. Um, so I always do my nail polish. And it's easy for it to get chipped sometimes. They get chipped, although they last uh, over a week. I'll share the nail polishes that I use if you want to if you wanna try that. I use something called... Maybe I'll put it on the screen because <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll put it on the screen if you want to try this nail polish. It's like a top coat. So when I put that, it normally lasts a week. But sometimes when you do certain things, um, it might not last that long. So it's easy sometimes your nails get uh, chipped or maybe you get your nails done somewhere. And, you know, two weeks and your nails are looking crazy because maybe you have to go to work and you don't have time. And I feel like maybe if your lifestyle is intruding in the um, upkeep of your beauty stuff like your nails that maybe you need to change how you upkeep them so if you feel like you don't have enough time to get your nails done because you're at work you don't have enough time to get your nails done because you are a mother you don't have enough time to go and get your nails done because you're in ministry then do your own nails do your own nails um so back to the <laughs> the heading so uh nails I think it's important as women to make sure that our nails are done. And I think if we learn to do this when nobody's watching, we're not trying to live up to an expectation. If we just learn for ourselves, have a boundary, have an expectation for yourself. Like, my nails have to be nice. My nails, and I mean, you yourself, and you're not lying or pretending to yourself, but you yourself, when you look at your nails, you want to see them done. You're uncomfortable when there's chipping and there's all sorts of things going on feel uncomfortable about it so you create an expectation for yourself you create a maybe a pattern you create a pattern for yourself and you begin to move on that foundation so i feel that that's very important and you know let's go up to the hair and like me i wear a lot of wigs um i have long hair beautiful hair i love my hair um but because of my lifestyle how busy i am sometimes i have to wear the normal wigs but um you know generally i remove them when i'm just at home with my family and i have my own hair out so sometimes with wigs and weaves and um what are those even braids uh what are those that they put is it pieces i don't know what they do they put pieces and like little strands and it looks like real hair sometimes it's easy to just forget to comb or to brush it and this is something I'm learning I'm not perfect <laughs> so we have to learn to comb our hair we have to learn to brush our hair and also our real hair brush your real hair comb your real hair take care of your real hair take care of your wig take care of just your hair and this is something that I think my grandma really hammered on and passed down to my mom and passed down to me um, and I think I've shared it on the Proverbs 31 um, video and it's just basically making sure that your hair is presentable. So whether it's a wig, whether it's a weave, whether it's your own hair, just make sure that it's presentable. It doesn't have to be elaborate and wow and ooh, extravagant and, you know, just make sure it's presentable. So, yeah, I want to share that on that one. And moving on, smelling good. 
And I know these may, may be superficial things, but these are things that can kind of seep into other things like your character, your attitude, um, just how you look at other people and how you look at yourself. And it's not vanity at all. It's things that um, have to do with your body because God didn't just give you a spirit, man. Because I think sometimes there can be um, this religious thing whereby, you know, I'm, I'm Christian, I'm saved, and I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about makeup, and I don't need to worry about perfume. But, you know, maybe that's your conviction. And, you know, makeup and perfume are not your thing. Great. But for other women, maybe it's a thing. So I feel that as women, we should just generally smell good. It's good for you to smell good. It's good for everybody else. So even when you're on your own, you're smelling good. Um, antiperspirant, perfume, oils and lotions and, you know, um, what do they call that? Um, body butters and... Those things are good for us women. They are great for our skin. I mean, stop moisturizing your skin. If you're that person that says, I don't, I don't want to do perfume, okay, stop moisturizing your skin for one week and come back and, and let me know how that goes. So you want to moisturize your skin. You want to have fragrances. You want to smell a certain way. You want to smell good. You want your skin to be looking good, smelling good. It's really, it's good for us women. And it's a standard that we should have for ourselves, not because you're going to get married next year, not because you want to start it because you're going to get married. No, it's a standard for you. It's a standard. It's a general standard. Smelling good. It doesn't start when you're married. It starts right now. So if you've been waiting to put a certain perfume or get a certain perfume or certain lotions or oils, don't wait, sis. Just just do it now. Don't wait. It's for you. It's, it's for your edification, for your skin, the edification of your skin. It's for the edification of your smell, your your uh, your scent, your personal scent. And I, I think it's important because sometimes you begin to learn what you like and what you don't like. But if you feel like, I'm not going to start this now, then it'll take so much time to know what you really like. And I feel like with trends as well, there are trends whereby, you know, that perfume is the perfume of the, of the, of the, of the year. Or that fragrance and that brand is the perfume of the season. But... I think if you begin to set certain standards for you, you're not moved by trends and you're not just spending money anyhow because you know the scent you like. You know how you want to smell like. You know what you like. So you spend time studying yourself. Did you know that we have to study ourselves? Study ourselves, study what we like, what we don't like, and grow from that. So you know that, wait a minute, that brand that they're pushing all over YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, I'm not really moved by that because this is what I like. This is who I am. I'm comfortable with this kind of scent. I'm comfortable with this kind of smell. And you're not moved or tossed to and fro. And maybe you might be somebody that likes to collect perfume, but at least you've formed a personal identity in terms of what you like to smell like. And so I think it's just fun and it's, it's just nice to know who you are in terms of what you like. And I feel like sometimes as Christians, we may just hammer on knowing who you are in Christ, but, you know, Christ is our all and be all. However, we are also individuals with bodies, and it's not vanity to get a perfume. It's not vanity to put lotions and to put lip gloss and, and lipstick. I think when you begin to make those things idols, and it's very possible to begin to make beauty an idol, beauty products and idol whereby you cannot live without them i think that's where the danger is however i feel like these are general day-to-day -day things that just make up a facet of who we are as women so just thought to share that one and moving on um this is more into now character so taming negative thoughts i feel like a, a lady is someone who's when i look at a lady i i don't think of someone who's petty Petty, just petty in day-to-day -day life. Petty and scrolling on, on the internet and just being petty in their thoughts. And it's um, important to not have a negative mindset. Just um, in the way that you think, the way that you look at people, the way that you view other people, the way that you look at yourself. Because when you're on your own, when nobody else is watching, what are your thoughts like? 
perhaps maybe when you are on social media or maybe you are in an industry that you're in and you're working with certain people or um, just generally in friendships or ministry or anything that you're doing when you're on your own how do you look at those people how do you look at yourself are you petty are you negative maybe you're at work and maybe a woman comes in maybe your colleague comes in and they're greeting you but in your heart you're looking at how they're dressed and you're trying to find something negative and you're saying oh she looks like she got dressed in the dark then you say oh hi how are you so in your mind you are petty in your mind and it's not really a nice thing to be it's it's not a nice thing it's it's a character flaw it's it's not a christian thing because i feel sometimes people associate the lord with pettiness but the lord jesus was not petty even when he drove those people out of that temple and he was cleansing that temple that was not pettiness so let us not be justified to be mean inside unkind in our hearts and kind in our thoughts and just really um really flawed in the way that we speak or the way that we look at people i feel like part of being a lady is being kind part of being a lady is being humble part of being a lady is being respectful and this is not just with our words but our thoughts our thoughts are very important so and sometimes this comes from comparison sometimes it comes from jealousy sometimes it comes from bitterness um somehow somewhere there's some pain that would need to be some pain that is there I, I i don't know about you but i feel like when we are unkind to ourselves and we when we are unkind to other people perhaps there's pain there that needs to be healed perhaps there's an issue there that needs healing an issue there that needs to be removed because there's absolutely no reason to be unkind no reason to be mean no reason to be disrespectful um you know so this works for friendships this works for anything in life and i feel like you know being a lady is not just how you look but it's how you treat people it's how you look at yourself how you treat yourself so i don't i could speak more on that but um yeah i just want to share that with you um so that the video won't be too long <laughs> but um the next one is submerging yourself in little things that you enjoy and not waiting around for Oh, uh, I can't really start golfing. I can't really start reading that book now. I can't do this and that. Because maybe you're, you're somebody who just waits for other people to join in before you do something. You wait for a certain season and waiting for a certain, you know, just waiting to live your life. Waiting to enjoy your life. And life is so precious. Life is so powerful life is so valuable and it's a gift that god gives us every day the bible tells us that his mercies are new every day it's a gift and we have to make the most of it there are people today that are bound on on their on a bed because they cannot just simply go they wish they could go outside and take a walk they wish that they could see the clouds they could hear the birds and and here we are with this gift and we don't utilize it because maybe our lives are not where they should be today. Maybe you're in the valley, you're in the wilderness, and you're not living in the valley. You're not living even in the wilderness because you're waiting for the perfect moment. And I'm just reminded, now, I don't want to preach, but I'm just reminded of Hagar. Hagar, she ran away. She was abused by Sarah, the wife of Abraham, and she ran away. But in the wilderness, there was an experience that happened. There was an encounter with God in that wilderness. And she got a chance to live in that moment. And she called God a new name. And she saw, and she saw deliverance. It's possible to live in a season. That doesn't seem very comfortable. It's up to you to find the beauty in your season. And, you know, life can never be perfect. It can never be perfect. As long as we are here in this world, life can never be perfect. And I don't mean to be negative. I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound negative. <laughs> But there are always going to be troubles. This is why the Bible says that do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has its own troubles. There are troubles of life, troubles in the world, trouble here on earth. So because of that, it's only when we get to heaven where there's perfection. So don't wait to live. Don't wait to enjoy the simple things of life. Even reading a book, find enjoyment. 
reading a book, watching a certain program, drinking a cup of coffee. Oh my gosh, I've not even drank my coffee yet. It's still full. I'll probably have to eat it up again. Anyway, so enjoyment in the little things of life, taking a walk, enjoying who God has given you, and don't allow social media to um, taint your vision, taint your goals. Don't allow trends and I know this, there's this thing called soft life that they're speaking about now, soft life. And, you know, if somebody's in a very difficult season and you're on social media and all these people are talking about soft life and they're traveling and wearing all these things, which most of it is not really real, don't compare yourself with that. See the beauty of who you are today. See the beauty of your season today, your life today, and find it and value it. Sometimes it's easy to begin to compare even your friendships, compare your relationships, your marriage, compare your, your money, your job, because of everything that is going all around. So you begin to lose sight of this blindness of who you are and what you have today, the blessings that God has given you. So I just want to end that on there and, um, you know, I can speak more on that. And also, the last bit is that, uh, you know, a lady is not a jealous or envious person they are not malicious you know malicious and constantly you're malicious a lady is not like that and it's not about religion or it's not about well you're a christian no it's not about that you know i've met some of the most amazing and i'm honestly amazing people who are not christians some of the most kindest pe people that i've met and spoken to some of the nicest people and you just think wow god this person is so nice, though they don't know God, but they've learned the art of not being malicious. They've learned the art. Some of them have been trained from a young age by their parents how to be kind, how to behave, how to carry themselves, how to speak to people, how to interact with people, to communicate. Communication. Um, and women, being malicious, being jealous and envious, it's a character flaw. And character, especially in Christ, because we have so many advantages in Christ. We have the Holy Spirit, we have the fruits of the Holy Ghost, we have the Word of God. So many things that are at our disposal to help us, to empower us, to be people who are not malicious, people who walk in the fruits of the Holy Ghost, in kindness, in love, in joy, in peace. And these are already things inside us. So when we suppress that, it's really not great. It's really not ladylike. And you know, there's a difference between jealousy and uh, envy. Um, something that I was studying. And uh, the perfect example of envy is actually Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Because they are both in the same position. They are both sons. However, one seems to be more liked by God. One is accepted by God. His offering is accepted by God. What he's presenting is accepted by God. So he becomes envious. Envious. Um, envy is like that green monster. It's, it's not jealousy. It's completely different. Whereas jealousy is somebody who has more than you. They're in a higher position. They are at a better position than you. But somehow they are affected by you. Even though you have less. Even though maybe you're, you're younger. And maybe they're older. And it happens in industries, an older, somebody who's maybe older and more seasoned, more experienced, they see somebody young coming up and they are affected. That is what we call jealousy. The perfect example is in the Bible with Saul, who was a king, and David. Saul and David. David is not a king. David is a little boy. But it's the attention that David got after he killed Goliath. This is what affected Saul. And Saul had an inkling that this guy is going to be big. He's going to be great. So, um, I don't know why I'm saying this, but be careful of your mentors. Be careful of those people that are mentoring you. Sometimes those who are meant to guide us, those who are meant to, you know, show us the way, those who are meant to help you sometimes, those who are seasoned can fall prey to jealousy. But anyway, that on the other side. So, as women... Let's guide the younger people. If we are older, let's guide them. Let's be kind. Let's be nice. Even when you feel, don't feel threatened. If somebody 
seems more talented, but you've achieved so much. Why are you threatened? Help them and guide them. Because being a lady is about your actions. It's not just about sitting down and saying, well, I'm not envious, I'm not jealous, but your actions show it that you're not envious. Show it that you're not a jealous person. Show it that you're not a malicious person in your career, in your industry. You know, you know, older women who are married for so many years, jealous because this young woman just got married uh, a few months ago, and they're giving her bad advice. Wait and see till you have kids. Oh, the honeymoon, the honeymoon phase is going to end soon. Why are you feeding this young woman who just got married? She's so excited. Why are you feeding her with negative thoughts? Could it be that you are jealous of her wedding? Could it be that you're jealous of her deco? You know, sometimes it's, it's little things like deco and her wedding dress. And all of a sudden, somebody forms up all these negative things. So show it that you're not malicious. Those who are, maybe they don't have much. Don't be envious of somebody who has more. No need to be envious. Find out how did they get there. Learn and be inspired. Because, you know, um, there's a thin line between it's being inspired and being jealous. You can easily go on the other side. So be inspired. You see somebody in the industry, especially in ministry as women, women in ministry. I find that there's a lot of jealousy, but I won't get into that. You see somebody has just released a book, but you're already jealous. You're already envious. Why? Just celebrate them because your blessing could be in the celebration of somebody else. Somebody has a sermon that has over a million views and you're so jealous of them. But you don't know the pain that they have to go through, the hate that person has to go through, that popular preacher, what they have to go through. You have no idea. But you just see the views and you're jealous. And you're asking God, how come my ministry is not that big? No, be inspired. See what they are doing to get there. Learn. Let's be inspired. So, you know, this is what I want to share with you today. And I know it's a lot. Um, and it's different things. But I truly hope that this can help you. Um, this is the list that I have. I don't have anything else on the list. So, if there's any other topics you want me to talk about, please let me know in the comment section. But I hope that this video really helps you and I love you guys so much and I feel like one day hopefully God willing one day hopefully we will meet and have these discussions in person God willing so um, I will see you very soon um, my plan now is to do these at least once a month because of time so um, I will see you on Monday for prayer God bless you take care Bye.